Everybody and welcome to our celebration evening for our class of 2021. We're going to start this special evening with a musical performance from one of our current students, James Earnshaw.
As this was their experience of learning for a significant amount of their time at Huddersfield New College. This was because their time at our college coincided with an exceptional world event, a global pandemic. And the global pandemic caused a storm in education, the likes of which we have not witnessed since the Second World War. But what was truly awe-inspiring about our class of 2021 was that they did not sit around and simply wait for the storm to end. They learned to dance in the rain. This is why they achieved the best ever advanced level results in the college's long history as a sixth form college. Collectively, they achieved a 100% pass rate on A level, with 64% of these grades the highly coveted A star, A and B grades, a 99% pass rate on vocational A levels, with 77% of these grades the highly coveted A star, A or B equivalent grades. This placed our class of 2021 
in the top 10% of all schools and colleges nationally for student progress on advanced level qualifications. An outstanding achievement and one of which each and every one of our class of 2021 should be proud. Sadly, the global pandemic is still storming and causing disruption in our daily lives. So my very final piece of advice as principal to our class of 2021 is that whatever you are doing now in your life beyond, beyond Huddersfield New College, keep dancing in the rain. Enjoy the rest of this celebration evening. It is richly deserved. It is now my great pleasure at this point in this evening to introduce you to our guest speaker and local legend, Earl Crabtree, who also has some really good advice for you in your life beyond Huddersfield New College. Earl. Thank you very much for the kind words again and I'd just like to give a little bit of a shout out to James who I thought was absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know standing up in front of people is really difficult when you when you're singing and things like that and actually public speaking as well but sometimes to stand up in in front of just a few people is even harder because there's nothing much really to engage with and we've got that issue at our guest tonight. Uh, the difference is for me, I played for the Giants for 18 years, so I'm used to not playing in front of crowds, so it doesn't help <laughs> me whatsoever. But yet again, I appreciate the fact that you've asked me here this evening to speak, and uh, I, I see it as a great opportunity, and I've been asked now a few times back to back as well, so I must be doing something either I'm doing right, or the fact that I just can't get anybody else. <laughs> now that does lead me on to the conversation yet again when I've been asked here this evening. It was a phone call, I remember it really quite well, because kind of went a little something like this. Hi Earl, uh, we need you for our celebration evening. No problem. We need somebody who is an inspiration to thousands, a legend of their own game. Somebody who is charming, good looking, funny and charismatic. Unfortunately, Andy Boob isn't available <laughs> to be fulfilling. So here I am this evening, yet again. But it also is, a tough period of time for everybody. We've all been through quite a lot, including myself as well. Now, the Huddersfield Giants, where I still actually work, we weren't allowed into games. I was furloughed like a lot of people. And I remember Boris Johnson finally allowing people back into the stadium, could finally go back to a game and actually work is what I do. Now, the thing is, my first thoughts of uh, when we finally allowed 4,000 people back into the stadium was, where the hell are the Giants getting 4,000 people from? <laughs> but we were lucky to be able to be back, and I see it as a privilege to be able to go and watch a game which I absolutely love. Now, I've been asked this evening to sort of say a few words that are either inspiring or motivating. Now, I can't promise to do that because everyone takes in what they want to take in. I can guarantee it's people just not having a clue about what I'm talking about. I'm not really that interested, but this is for the people that are interested, the ones that do want to listen in and maybe take a couple of words of advice for myself. Someone who has played at elite level of sports, but also gone into the business world as well. Now, it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been plain sailing, but I've been very fortunate to live a life which was a dream. And I kind of took the opportunities that presented themselves to me, but I chased them as well. And that is something that I speak about quite, quite a lot. Now, with any good story, it starts in the beginning. The beginning for me was Underbank Rangers in, in the home third. Now, if no one knows where Underbank is. Let me set the scene for you. <clears throat> Underbank Rangers is an amateur rugby league club. It's on the border of home third. It's essentially on a mountain with its own microclimate. In the summer, it is bleak, and in the winter, well, birds fly upside down because it's not really worth taking a crash out. Now, it is cold, it is bitter, it's the sort of place that you don't really want to go to at any time of the year, especially when it is in winter. Now, there's no grass on the field, it's just mud and cow muck. Normally, parents, they walk across the field before the game looking for sharp objects to remove. Our parents walked across looking for cows and ushering, off, ushering them off the field. This was commonplace and it happened all the time. And I remember the pitch, absolutely disgusting. Ah, awful, it absolutely stunk as well. I'd been tackled by four people standing to get me down to the floor. I'm only 10 years old at this age. 
and I'm covered in cow milk. It's, it's on my arms, it's on my chest, it's in my hair, it's in my mouth, it's right in my teeth as well, and it stinks. And I remember looking over to the sideline and I could hear this loud, booming Yorkshire voice. Get up, you great wet lettuce. Come up, we're doing nothing but put airs on your chest. Cheers, mum. <laughs> and that was the sort of support I had. But this is where my passion for rugby league stems from, where it began. I made memories there that I'll always cherish and remember forever, and also friendships as well, which I hold dear now to now. You know, it's, it wasn't all about playing sport, it was about the memories and making friends. Now, at Underbank is where it started, but it quickly changed. It went on to uh, another club called Hudson YMCA, very, very close to here uh, this evening. And uh, it was there where I actually made my mark and made my sort of move and created an opportunity for myself. Now, the Huddersfield Giants Academy team were playing up there at the same time as I was training. I decided to go up to the head coach of the academy team, which was a big thing to do for me because I was 15 years old. And I asked if I could come and train with them. He looked me up and down and said, you're a big lad. He goes, can you play? And um, I explained I could play, I was okay, I'm not bad. And we had a final at the weekend. He said he'd send somebody down to watch me, and he did. Uh, a player by the name of Paul Dixon, which won't mean a lot to many people for me. He was a massive player in his day. Uh, Ex-Great Britain, international, my position as well, I came down to watch. Fortunately for me, I scored the first try of the game. It was off the back of a beautiful little kick, which split the winger and the fullback. I dived onto the ball, straight over the line, in the corner, four points, first try of the game. Unfortunately for us, we went on to narrowly lose that game by 38 points to four. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a bit of a shock to the system, but I scored the first try of the game. I played well and did enough. And enough for us to get noticed. And sometimes that's all it takes. Just do something special, work hard, and you will get the rewards. And it's, it's quite funny, throughout my career, the harder I worked, the luckier I got. And even so much to go and sign my first ever contract at the age of 17 years old. From that one game, I got invited to training. Train for the academy team, the under 16s and under 18s, respectively, after that. But it wasn't until the 1730 I signed my first ever professional contract. My dad is my agent, and we rocked up in his old Sierra Sapphire, <laughs> and um, I thought I'd absolutely made it. But that was just the start, the start of the, the life of a rugby player. My journey, the next 20 years were defined by those moments. And it wouldn't have been if I hadn't taken that first little opportunity. Off the back of that, I managed to work hard enough and actually represent the, the club on numerous occasions. I went on to make 428 appearances for the Huddersfield Giants, played prop forward and captain in my club as well. I was very fortunate that I ended up going on to play for England as well. I made 18 appearances for England and uh, those are the proudest moments of my life and there was one occasion especially and this is what these memories are about played against the Kiwis, the New Zealand team at the John Smith Stadium which was the Gal Farm back in, in the day and it was 2012 I believe and I walked out in front of my home crowd, all 10 of them and it was an exciting prospect for me actually lining up against the best players in the world this lad from Huddersfield, somebody who was <coughs> actually making it on the big stage and I finally got to the John Smith Stadium playing in the semi-final of the Four Nations and I'm lining up against the Kiwis and not only were I lining up against them, they were doing a the hacker against me. If anyone's seen the hacker, it's, it's a scary, scary spectacle. Now, I wouldn't say I was intimidated by this moment. I was in the prime of my career, playing the best rugby I'd ever played and I fancied it as well. But what I did have is ultimate respect all these players in front of me, they were doing the hacker, they wanted to rip my head off. I can see it in their eyes, they're wanting blood. And all I could do was stand there with my mate side by side thinking, wow, this is awesome. Absolutely sensational. I'm stood here, there's millions of people watching on TV. These guys are threatening to kill me. And you know what? It's something I will never ever forget. Another memory that I've created through working hard and actually achieving what I wanted to achieve. Now, that game we went on in 2012, and it's something I'll never forget. And not only did we sort of tame the Kiwis, we put them to the sword as well. And it's something that I'll cherish forever, more so than a lot of other games. I was lucky enough to go on to Grand Finals, so I went on to two Challenge Cup Finals, unfortunately lost both of those. But eventually, 
like every rugby league player, it comes time to hang up your boots. Now in 2016, I hung my boots for the Giants. Played all those games and it suddenly ended. And it's amazing how one chapter ends and another one starts. And for you guys, it is a case of a new chapter. And uh, obviously I'd say congratulations at this moment for everything you've achieved. But this is the time now to really kick on and look at what you want to do in the future. My messages are simple. There's only a few of them and hopefully you can take away something of this. Surround yourself with good people. People want to drive you in the right direction. People want to achieve with you and not hold you back and rein you in. I guarantee there's people in your lives that you will come across, you'll be friends with, and you move on. It's just the way the world works. But surround yourself with good people, massively important. And it's something that I've learned, especially after my rugby career. I've already, always been surrounded by 30 or lads that would have performed for each other. Outside of that, it's been a little bit more difficult. But I surround myself with good people at the moment that help me get to where I want to be. So much so, we set up a couple of businesses in property, which are doing quite well. We're very happy with what we're doing and what we're achieving. But it's only the start for me. From that, basically from surrounding yourself with good people, is obviously work hard. Work hard for yourselves, work hard for the people around you, and make sure that you want to achieve something and make sure you work for that. Look for these opportunities because opportunities don't just land on your lap unless you're a very lucky person. You have to chase them and chase them hard. Talk about chasing dreams, but for me, chase opportunity. Look for opportunity and don't expect them just to land on your lap. And then the big one for me, and it's something that I picked up in the great philosopher, Tony Beats from uh, Gold Rush and Discovery Channel. <laughs> His favourite quote is make it happen. Make it happen. It's pretty simple. No excuses, no nonsense. Just make it happen. So finally from me, I'd like to say thank you very much for this opportunity yet again for allowing me to speak and say a few words. But I'd like to say good luck to you all in the future and quite simply, make it happen. Thank you. Those inspiring words. Um, as a long standing friend of the college, you will know better than anyone that although you're this evening celebrity, the true stars are our students. So the pandemic has taken so much away from all of us in so many different ways. And the opportunity to celebrate together with friends and family and our whole college community is just one of the other things that we've lost. But in true HMT fashion, we won't allow the virus to stop us from bidding a fond farewell. So rather than clinking glasses together, our amazing heads of faculty will be coming to the podium to share the names of our star students. Staff have nominated students within their faculty for subject prizes and progress prizes. The subject prize is awarded to students who have achieved the highest standards of academic achievement in their subject. And the progress prize is awarded to students who have developed both academically and personally during their time with us. This evening we're celebrating our new, unique class of 2021. You achieved so much in unprecedented circumstances. We are proud of each and every one of you. You are our brightest stars, and we can't wait to see you shine now and in the future. So without further ado, I'd like to invite our first head of faculty to the podium, Paul the Husband, Head of Business, <coughs> IT, Travel and Economics. Congratulations for your achievements in the last two years. It's been the most difficult of times, as we know, but your achievements have been outstanding. The great hope of students in our faculty, working with two to 23 teachers, has made it a really difficult choice to select our prize winners because you all worked so hard and made excellent achievements um, in all of your studies. And so here are our prize winners. For A-Level Business Studies, the subject award um, goes to two students. We couldn't split a hair on the contributions these two students made and their outstanding success. So Zach Jagger and George Kelly, congratulations. The Progress Award goes to Max Selvage. For A-Level Economics, the prize winners for a subject is Meadow Bowster. And the prize winner for progress is Alan Chin. 
For the BTEC Level 3 Diploma in Business, the subject award is, goes to Emily Marston and the Progress Award goes to Maisie Bernard Martin. So Maisie. The BTEC Level 3 Diploma in Travel subject award goes to Lucy Smith and the Progress Award goes to Conrad Zmuda Trebiowski. For the BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma, the subject award goes to Katie Brennan and the Progress Award goes to Aleem Hussain. For the BTEC Extended Diploma in Travel, the subject award goes to Rebecca Shackleton and the Progress Award to Bradley Eastwood. For the BTEC Level 3 Diploma in Business, the subject award goes to Charlotte Lannan and the Progress Award to Sakina Latine. Also, the BTEC Level 3 Subdiploma in Travel and Tourism, Charlotte Langham, also receives the Subject Award and the Progress Award goes to Elise D. Barry. Now moving on to the IT and Computing Faculty. This is a new area which I'm managing, but I'd like to congratulate you all on your success. So for A-Level Computer Science, the Subject Award goes to Zach Jagger and the Progress Award to Elliot Winterbottom. The BTEC Level 3 IT Diploma in Web and Software goes to Joel Bocci and the Progress Award goes to Lucas Williams. For the BTEC Extended Diploma in Information Technology, the Subject Award goes to Jack Lamb and the Progress Award to Harrison Villiers. The BTEC Level 3 Subsidiary Diploma in IT, the Subject Award goes to Faria Ajmal and the Progress Award to Achia Taylor. And finally, for my faculty, the BTEC Sub Subsidiary Diploma in IT Software goes to Will Griffiths for the Subject Award and the Progress Award goes to David Sluer. Congratulations to all of our award winners, but also to all of our learners in the class of 21. Good evening, uh, my name is Don Hamlin. I'm the faculty manager for creative media and um, performing and visual arts. So here are the awards for both subjects uh, award and progress award. So starting with A-Level Film Studies, the Subject Award goes to Colley Adams and the Progress Award goes to Leah Horn. The A-Level Media Studies, the Subject Award goes to Darren, Darren Morehouse and the Progress Award goes to Elliot Young. For the Level 3 Diploma in Creative Media, Film, TV and Radio, the Subject Award goes to Faye Greenwood and the Progress Award goes to Louis Ashby. For the Level 3 Extended Diploma Media Production and TV and Film, the Subject Award goes to Angus Cook and the Progress Award goes to Bethany Best. Um, for the Level 3 Subdiploma in Creative Media, the Subject Award goes to Luke Harlow and the Progress Award goes to Kane Adams. Um, next we have the Level 3 Diploma in Creative Media or Digital Games. Um, subject award there was Nathan Denton and the prize for Progress Award goes to Tajay Taylor. The uh, Level 3 Subdiploma in Creative Media Games Design uh, Subject Award is, goes to Zach Jagger and the Progress Award goes to Hayden Jan. The Level 3 Extended Diploma Games Media Development goes to Kayan Doyle for subject and Progress that goes to Luke Jordan. Moving on to the art based awards now. For A Level 3D Design, the subject award goes to uh, Jesse Waboge and the Progress Award goes to Taylor Gibson. For A Level Fine Arts, the subject award goes to Collie Adams again, so she won two awards for both film and fine art. And the Progress Award goes to Jade Tomlins. For A-Level Graphic Communication, Lisa Slater won the Subject Award and Jessica Roberts took the Award for Progress. In A-Level Graphic Communication, um, the award for Subject went to Lisa Slater, 
and for progress, Jessica Roberts. A on photography and the subject award went to Neve Curran and progress to Lily Walsh. For A level textile design, subject was Jasmine Harrowsmith and progress award Neil Hunt. Moving on now to performing arts awards for level three, um, diploma in performing arts. The winner for subject was Ollie Bolton and the progress award was for Melissa Dakerson. And the level three extended diploma. Um, in performing arts, went to subjects went to sorry Liam Weatherall and the progress Lucy Rate for the subdiploma acting. Um, the subject award went to Honey Joe Spivy and the progress award to Isabel Eclid. The level three subdiploma in dance went to Lucy Shallow for subject and for progress Natasha Bradshaw. The level three diploma in music. Performance. Subject went to Morgan Riley and the Progress Award went to Millie London. Um, for the level three of the Program Music Technology, the Subject Award went to Emily Lawrence and the Progress Award went to Joshua Stack. And lastly, the level three diploma in musical theatre went to Alish Farrell for Subject and Megan Hamer for Progress Award. So big congratulations to uh, all our prize winners this evening for all our faculty. Okay, so to kick off, then we're going to start with the sports um, area and the subject award for A level physical education goes to Amelia Weston. The progress award goes to Elizabeth Atwood. The BTEC level three diploma in sports and exercise science. The subject award goes to Lily Hurst. And the Progress Award goes to Gabrielle McNay. The Level 3 Diploma in Sport Development and Coaching. The Subject Award goes to Chloe Seed. And the Progress Award goes to Marcus Ledbeater. The Level 3 Extended Diploma in Sports and Exercise Science. The Subject Award is Chloe Hurst. And the Progress Award goes to Leo Rowe. The BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma in Sports Development and Coaching. The Subject Award goes to Marcus Abbott. And the Progress Award goes to Jamilia um, Siddiq. The Subsidiary Diploma in Sport and Exercise Science. The Subject Award goes to Jacob Sykes Kenworthy. And the Progress Award goes to Anya Khan. Okay, moving on to the Health and Social Care um, groups. The Diploma, Health and Social Care, Subject Award goes to Kai Kilborn, and the Progress Award goes to Misama Begum. The Diploma in Health and Social Care goes to the Subject Award goes to Madeleine Leach, and the Progress Award goes to Kaylee Hamley. The Extended Diploma in Health and Social Care, Subject Award goes to Lydia Robertshaw. And the Progress Award goes to Ikra Javid. The Extended Diploma in Health and Social Care Subject Award goes to Stefania Vanduli. And the Progress Award to Faria Ahmed. The Subsidiary Diploma Health and Social Care Subject Award goes to Bethany Hewitt. And the Progress Award goes to Maisie Bernard Martin. Um, and finally, on to the um, Early Years team. The Level 3 Diploma in Childcare and Education, the Subject Award is Alana Hurst and the Progress Award is Emily Dinto. Thank you. And that has been met by extraordinary energy and enthusiasm from our students who have worked in such difficult circumstances 
Although actually a few students who've got prizes tonight tell me they actually enjoyed lockdown because it gave them more chance to spend time reading uh, music to my ears. Anyway, on to our subject prizes. So for A-level geography, the subject award goes to Charlotte Langham and the progress award to Harry Davis. For A-level history, the subject prize goes to Zidon Ramage and the progress award to Isaac Latham. For A-level philosophy, ethics and religion, the subject prize goes to Ella Booth and the Progress Award to Elizabeth Morse. For A-level drama and theatre studies, the subject prize goes to Zydon Ramage and the Progress Award to Caitlin Park. For A-level English language, the subject award goes to Luke Hand and the Progress Award to Thomas Hennigan. For A-level English language and literature, the subject prize goes to Meda Bamsight and Meda also achieved the subject award for the extended project qualification. The progress award goes to Isaac Latham. For A-level English Literature, the prize goes to Morgan Riley and the progress award to Gabriel Forrest. For A-level French, the subject award goes to Ras Prince Tim and the progress award to Holly Penlethy. And finally, A-level Spanish, Teddy Ferreira takes the subject award and Edie Tripp takes the progress award. Congratulations to all our fantastic students for their achievements over the last two years. Being I'm not over, I'm head of faculty for maths and science. Available maths, winning the subject award is Charlotte Smith. And when the progress award is available further maths, the subject award goes to Philip Tana and the progress award to Lisa Meadowcroft. In level biology, when the subject award is uh, Phoebe Southers and the progress award goes to Jamie Walters. And for level chemistry, the subject award is won by Neve Curran and the progress award has been won by Sarah Gordon. For level physics, uh, the subject award again goes to Charlotte Smith and the progress award goes to Amber Spencer. BTEC Level 3 Diploma in Applied Science, the subject award goes to Charlotte Morton and the Progress Award goes to Mo Singapore. The BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma in Applied Science Award, um, the subject award goes to Ellen Mosley and the Progress Award goes to Serena Hussain. And finally, for the BTEC Level 3 Sub Diploma in Applied Science, the subject award goes to Louis Skinner and the Progress Award goes to Raz Tim. All over. A level psychology, the subject award goes to Phoebe Buck and the progress award to Natasha Bradshaw. The BTEC level three in applied psychology, the subject award goes to Norman Dixon and the progress award to JJ Russell. The BTEC level three in applied law, the subject award goes to Sadia Shahid and the progress award to Daisy Hickman. And finally, the Criminology Applied Diploma. The subject award goes to Sophia Smith and the progress award to Yusuf Ali. And that concludes the level three subject awards. <laughs> great pleasure at this point in the evening to um, tell you about four special awards that we give for uh, contributions to our college beyond the curriculum. Um, and we're very fortunate that three of our prize winners of these four awards are with us this evening and so we'll be able to receive these prizes in person, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so our first special prize is for our most inspiring student. And this year, the, the winner of our most inspiring student is Phoebe Southers. So from the outset, Phoebe's commitment to her studies 
whilst also competing at a national level in tennis, brought her to everyone's attention. This ability to stand out from the crowd was why she was chosen as one of our two head students at the end of year 12. In this role, she gave generously of her time to every event that we hosted, be it live or virtual. She was a perfect ambassador for the college at these events. Whilst at college, Phoebe was nominated for the National <coughs> Deaf Sports Personality of the Year Award, and it came as no surprise to anyone here when she won this award. She has a joyous personality and it is contagious. She also achieved the much coveted A star in all three of her A level subjects and is now at Loughborough University studying psychology. This is why Phoebe is an inspiration to us as a staff. She has never allowed her disability to stop her from following her passions and from realising her dreams. She is also a truly kind person and she inspired us to be kinder people too. Phoebe. Our next special prize is contribution to the college community. And this prize this year goes to Haroon Mohammed. Haroon will live in our memories for a long time. Not just because he came to college in a full Santa suit last Christmas to raise money for our college charity, the Laura Crane Youth Cancer Trust, but because he was always looking at how he could help improve the student experience at Huddersfield New College. Haroon was one of our diversity champions and a deputy head student, and he gave his time generously to both roles. In fact, if we ever needed someone to help us out to do something for our students, new or current, Haroon was the first person we turned to. He never ever let us down. This absolute commitment to his fellow students and to doing good for others is why we have chosen him as the most deserving award winner of our contribution to the college community, Haroon. to the wider community and this year this prize goes to Maisie Bernard 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 Bernard, Bernard Martin. Maisie joined the left the college uh, on a level one foundation diploma in business in September 2017. She progressed from here to the level two diploma in business in 2018 and in 2019 she progressed to the level three diploma in business and the Level 3 Subsidiary Diploma in Health and Social Care. She finally completed her studies at the College in the summer of 2021, achieving Distinction Star, Distinction, Distinction Star, Distinction Star, the highest grades available in VTEC. This was an incredible achievement given her starting point and it speaks volumes about Maisie's character and her tenacity. Maisie was also a diversity champion and was passionate in her advocacy of equality and diversity at the college. And alongside her studies and her work as a diversity champion, Maisie set up and ran her own small business outside of college to learn more about the business world and to develop her entrepreneurial skills for her future next steps. But in keeping with Maisie's genuine concern for others, she donated some of her profits from her small business to local charities. There are many reasons why Maisie deserves an award, but her genuine concern for others, not just within the college community, but beyond, is the reason that we have chosen Maisie as the recipient of our contribution to the wider community award this evening. Maisie. can't be with us this evening um, and this is our uh, prize winner for our, our highest academic achiever in 2021 and this year the student with the highest academic achievement in the whole college was Neve Curran. Neve fully deserves this award because she achieved A star, A star, 
A star, A star in her A-level subjects. This is particularly noteworthy because Neve studied a rare blend of science and art-based subjects at A-level. Neve's outstanding level of achievement in these A-levels was founded on a genuine passion for her chosen A-level subjects, a high degree of intellectual curiosity and a great deal of hard work. These personal and academic qualities enabled Neve to thrive in the most challenging of circumstances, a global pandemic. Neve's commitment to helping others make progress in these A-level subjects too should also be celebrated tonight. This was particularly evident during periods of lockdown and remote learning. Neve was, in summary, an absolute pleasure to know and to teach, and we are delighted that she has moved on from the college to study biomedical sciences at King's College London. So congratulations me, you are the recipient of our highest academic achiever in 2021 award. Many congratulations. <laughs> So we're going to celebrate this evening are our foundation degree students. So one of the unique things about Huddersfield New College is the range of provision that we can offer to our students from level one through to foundation degree. And some of our foundation degree students have spent almost half their educational lives with us. And in fact, they spend so much time with us that uh, we think they're going to stay forever. <laughs> but this group of students have completed two years of their degree um, and they will carry on to complete their degrees with new plan next year. So it's a great pleasure to celebrate the achievements of our foundation degree in sport and exercise science students, Shazal Akhtar, Faye Allen, Seth Blakeborough, Joshua Elliott, Lauren Halloway, George Hill, Georgia Hudson, Adma Kaburis, Connor Lockwood Jackson, Emily Marshall, Emily Marshall, Hannah Moles, Keris Pember, and Georgia Ridgway. So we've had the opportunity to celebrate the achievements of our most highest achieving and our students who made the most progress with us. So the final thing this evening is to hand over to Linda Summers, who is the chair of the corporation, for some closing remarks. Linda. Congratulations to you all for your phenomenal achievements. To achieve so much and so highly in an ordinary year would be brilliant. The fact that you've done so during a pandemic makes that doubly impressive. And you all now know that you can respond brilliantly and with real resilience to whatever life is going to throw at you in the future. You're a remarkable group of students and you should all take real pride in the achievements that we've been celebrating this evening. It's not just the pandemic that makes this celebration evening a bit different from normal, because it's also Angela's last celebration evening as our principal. After 14 years leading the college, she's decided to retire at the end of this academic year. So while she'll always be a very welcome guest at these evenings, this is her last one as our principal. And we thought it would be wrong to let the evening pass without reflecting on that and without marking Angela's immense contribution to our college. There's going to be several other occasions, I think, nearer the time of her retirement to thank her more fully for her outstanding leadership over the last 14 years. For now, though, on an evening dedicated to celebration, we wanted to mark and to celebrate the legacy that Angela will leave. She has built and led a college of which we are all so very proud and she's done so with huge passion, with infectious passion and with immense dedication. So our final award this evening is a one-off really to recognise the exceptional leadership of Angela of this college and the outstanding legacy she leaves us. Angela, thank you.
wish you all the safe journey home, but you're already there. So have a good evening and very well done on all your